Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. You've probably heard that some people with COVID-19 lose their sense of smell. We term this loss of smell anosmia, and interestingly, it's a relatively common symptom of COVID-19. Up to 55% of people who get COVID-19 experience anosmia. Now, luckily, it's termed transient, which means the sense of smell should return. Most people return that sense of smell within a couple of weeks. However, there's a subset of people, around about 10%, who still haven't regained that sense of smell within a month. Now, how does this happen and why does this happen? So I've drawn up here the nasal cavity, deep within the nose. And what you'll find is obviously we inspire air and as we inspire air, we bring in chemicals and odorants. And what happens is sensory neurons that project from our central nervous system, specifically an area called the olfactory bulb, they project neurons through a bony plate in the nose. Now, if you were to get your finger and stick it up your nose, you wouldn't be able to reach this area up the top here, which we term the olfactory epithelium. The neurons that project through this bony plate can actually be damaged due to a knock. And what happens is the bony plate shears these neurons off. This isn't what's happening in COVID-19. The neurons that project through will pick up these chemicals known as odorants and send the signal directly through to the olfactory bulb and then to the central nervous system and brain for us to be aware of what we've smelt. Okay. Now, this olfactory epithelium isn't just made up of these olfactory neurons or olfactory sensory neurons, there's actually a whole bunch of other cells present called supporting cells. Now these supporting cells can include microvilla cells, sustentacular cells, globular basal cells, olfactory and sheathing cells. There's a whole bunch of different cells that support the role of the olfactory sensory neurons. Now when I say support, what they do is they provide metabolic products. They take away metabolic wastes. They support the cytoskeletal architecture around the area. They also make sure that if any of the cells die, they phagocytose, so they eat them, they recycle them. They make sure that homeostasis is maintained in this microenvironment so the olfactory neurons can do their job and pick up a sense of smell. All right, now, when we inspire, for example, particles that contain the virus SARS-CoV-2, we know that the virus is surrounded by proteins called S proteins. Now, what needs to happen is this. Cells or tissues need to express two particular receptors, ACE2 and TMPRSS2. ACE2 is angiotensin converting enzyme 2 and TMPRSS2 is a serine protease. Basically, they're scissors that chop proteins. What happens is the virus must bind to ACE2 receptors and this little serine protease needs to chop some of the proteins on the outside surface of the virus. That then activates the proteins to be able to embed themselves into the membrane of the cell and it can re release its virus, or I should say, it can release its DNA inside the cell itself for replication. So what scientists have recently done is they've had a look at all the tissues within the body and had a look at the expression of these particular receptors to see what tissues they're highly expressed in because that's going to mean likely that they're going to be most susceptible to SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. What they found is that the heart has high expression levels, the kidneys, blood vessels, the brain, so aspects of the nervous system, the respiratory tract, and the lungs as well. This is one of the reasons why we get multi-organ dysfunction in COVID-19. What a most recent paper did in August 2020 is they had a look at the cells of the olfactory epithelium and they had a look at the expression levels of these two particular receptors. What they found was the olfactory sensory neurons, those that pick up the odorants for the sense of smell, they don't really express those two. However, the supporting cells do, or at least a subset of those supporting cells too, do. So for example, the microvilla cells, the sustentacular cells, and the globular basal cells tend to express ACE2 and TMPRSS2 relatively highly compared to others. Now what this highlights is that the virus SARS-CoV-2 tends to infect the supporting cells and damage their ability to ability to maintain homeostasis for the olfactory sensory neurons. Therefore, over time, the olfactory sensory neurons can't do their job and the sense of smell is lost. And it's transient because once the virus has run its course, the supporting cells can be regenerated and then can support the olfactory neurons. I like to think of this as a race car driver. Now the race car driver seems to do all the work. The race car driver is the olfactory sensory neurons. However, without its supporting 
team, without people there to refuel the car, to fix the car when it's damaged, to tell the driver where to go, uh, over a short period of time, the car's just gonna stop and the driver's gonna be non-functional. But once you replenish or rejuvenate or regenerate that supporting team, the driver will be able to start kicking into gear, so to speak, and be able to do their job. So this seems to be what's happening when the virus SARS-CoV-2 is infecting the olfactory epithelia and people are losing their sense of smell in COVID-19.